Hey everyone, welcome to another Birdies Conversation where we talk about defending your mental health. That's what we're doing today. Uh, Angel City has partnered with Birdies for this talk series to discuss important topics to help women and really all people to rise up both personally and professionally. I'm your host, Jen, head of content for Angel City, but I am not the reason you are here watching today. So let's get right to the two people that uh, are amazing living, breathing examples of people who are no stranger to the world of mental health conversations. Uh, first up, Carrie Ricaro, Angel City midfielder and co-host of the Butterfly Road podcast. How you doing, Carrie? I'm great. How are you, Jen? I'm great. Yeah, it's been good. I'm sweaty today. It's hot, but you know. I am too. I'm, all right. <laughs> Um, you know, we're midway through the season, you know, what's been, you know, quick question up to you, but what, what's been the most mentally like invigorating or challenging thing since you've been part of Angel City? I think the newness of it all, new city, new team, new coach, new style of play, new stadium, new fans, new apartment, new everything has been really challenging. Um, Ginny and I recently talked about it in an episode where like all I've done is grow because that's all I've been able to, I've been put in an environment where you have to, because it's so difficult, but so rewarding as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely been the biggest challenge, but also when you start to like overcome obstacles and succeed or perform well, or like bond with your teammates, it's like really fun to see the progress. Yeah. And speaking of, uh, we are also joined by Ginny McGowan, former college soccer player at Notre Dame, the other co-host of the Butterfly Road podcast. A uh, quick, quick one to you, Jenny. How, how, tell us like how and why the Butterfly Road podcast started. You know, what, it's it's a candid, if you guys have these candid conversations about athletes and sports and mental health and, and lots of sarcasm and fun, but like, you know, how did this all come about? Yeah, so Carrie and I, before it even started, would just have these conversations with each other by ourselves and we'd always end it with like oh my gosh like I kind of wish other people heard this type of stuff but um the main reason I would say is when I was younger and growing up with performance anxiety and soccer it always made me feel like I wasn't alone when I would hear about other athletes that were going through mental struggles but it was really hard to find that type of stuff and so I kind of wanted to create the space where we could openly talk about it. We do athlete spotlights where we talk about different athletes going through um, their own mental struggles and hopefully it'll help someone out there and be that space that I kind of wish I had when I was growing up. Well, one thing that does not have performance anxiety, I think, is that microphone. I mean, that thing is large and in charge and, and <laughs> <laughs> so I am excited. We're, we're going to be able to hear you perfectly today. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> um, all right. I have mine too, but it's hiding. <laughs> very very large like and in charge. Right. See, this is how we know you guys are in the podcast space. You're professionals. You got the gear. Yeah, we don't mess around. We're serious. Exactly. Um, all right. So. First of all, before we get into the meat of this discussion, I, I think it, not that anyone was curious, but we are not mental professional, mental health professionals here. Um, you know, we are not here to give people advice on, on their personal struggles and things. That is not what, that, that's not what we are licensed or trained to do. But, you know, we do believe that the discussion of mental health is, is so important and it still needs to be dis destigmatized, you know, especially in the sports world. So let's kind of run with that a little bit. Um, you know, Carrie, I'll start with you. Where, where do you think we are kind of with in the state of the world and, and maybe even in this country with people finally taking mental health seriously? Where do you think we're at? I think, and I like have basically no idea because it's not like this is something that I was paying attention to back when I was even younger in high school. But I think that so many more athletes are speaking out about their mental health and they're being offered that compassion and that support. And so I think that's helping destigmatize. With that being said, Jenny and I talk about this a lot. Like we have a long way to go. Anytime you see an athlete that comes out and says, I'm struggling with this or that, you have a lot of people that are still kind of giving them backlash or not fully understanding, not validating their feelings. Um, and that like lack of empathy is probably very difficult. And so for that reason, I think we do have a long way to go, which is why we're both so passionate about this and wanting to help destigmatize it's not like we're going to change the world and make everybody in the world understand that mental illness is real and you're not alone but it's just if everyone does one little thing and does their part it eventually i think can make a really big difference jenny how about you 
Yeah, I second that. I mean, I think it's definitely a lot better than it used to be. Um, we've seen that through a lot of the athletes that we've, you know, researched and even mm -hmm. athletes from, um, we did Terry Bradshaw one week and he was given, there were examples from like the eighties and the way that like people responded to him coming out about his struggles is just, it like shocked Carrie and I, but we know that it's kind of, it was how it was back then. And so now comparing that today, it's a lot better, but I also think that we are learning so much more about mental health and the brain in general, like every single day. And so with that's going to come new developments, new understandings, hopefully more sympathy from people. But um, yeah, I think it's, you know, at a good point right now, but we just got to keep it rolling. Terry Bradshaw, former colleague of mine. So love that. that he oh my gosh. Really? Yeah. Like, that's so cool. Yeah, we did an episode on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, so did you guys have a moment or an epiphany of some sort in your own lives where you really realized that mental health was something that you needed to start paying attention to for yourself? Ginny, what was it for you? Yeah, I think I was just... <laughs> not myself, like in my head when I was playing soccer, I couldn't get that same like love for the game I had growing up. Um, I think it was like when I started doing ODP and all those like player development, player ID camps. And I was my own worst enemy because my brain was just kind of freaking me out before every practice, every game. Um, and I asked myself, is everyone else feeling this? And if so, why is no one talking about it? And when I would kind of gauge like other athletes around me and what they're how they were feeling about the game and whatnot I realized like whoa my mental <laughs> health I guess is making this seem like a much bigger deal than it is but I don't know how to stop it um and I'm not qualified to teach myself how to do that I mean I'm in eighth grade at this point and so from there I was you know going to get help and see a therapist which I mean was awesome and exactly what I needed to do. But yeah, just kind of seeing and comparing myself to how others were reacting to things and seeing how I was kind of different about it made me realize, yeah, I needed, I needed help. Carrie, how about for you? What, what turned your, your, your mind to realizing this was part of your, the care that you needed to give yourself? I wasn't as young as Ginny in terms of like getting help or knowing that I needed to, but I do think I had struggles in high school, anxiety, dealt with some sort of depression, but I just like, I don't think I was fully aware at the time that that was something I needed to work on and get help. I think it was just something that like no one talked about and it was like, toughen up, you're an athlete, like you're resilient, you've always been a strong warrior type of girl. And so I didn't even know at the time that those options were available to me. And then when I got to college, I was really struggling, felt very alone, same as you, like just knew that the way I was feeling wasn't normal compared to everyone else that was in the same shoes as me. And so that's when I started to learn that there are resources like a sports site at Notre Dame and started opening up to my coach saying, I, I need help or I'm going to leave. And he was like, all right, you're going right to the health center and we'll set you right up with somebody. And so that's when I was like, Oh, this is a, a thing. This is an option. This, these are just tools to help me kind of enjoy my experience in college. So I don't get depressed and, leave and quit and kind of like throw it all away just because of my mental illness. Like something Jenny and I have always said on the podcast is like, we are two very successful women who have dealt with our own versions of mental illness, but those things don't define us. They're just a part of the journey. And so you don't let it really like stop you. You just kind of like manage it, deal with it and then move forward and you can still be successful. I mean, something that both of you keyed on is this like word alone, right? Is is that something that you both felt you were for a while, you're the only person who was dealing with these with these things is, did you really feel that it's it was just you? I did, I was so confused. I actually was recently talking about this within the last few days. I was so confused why, why am I the only one feeling like this? Did, how does no one else have the same thoughts as me? And, and I feel like Ginny was kind of the same way. And that's why I was like, wait a second okay, this isn't how it should be. And that's when I was like, I need help. Yeah, it's, I would compare it and my brain works and like, I love thinking about like um, analogies, but being when you're at that point, you're at such a low point, like you're in, literally in a hole, not literally, but like figuratively in a hole. <laughs> and 
you do feel alone and your brain is convincing you that you are alone. Like it's hard to say now not being in a hole currently, but when you're in it, we always talk about it. It's just, you're in such a different headspace and you feel like no one understands you. You feel like no one, you're not getting like validation that, um, like, no, this is okay. You're feeling this. Like if you're not talking to anyone, you're just alone with your thoughts. And a lot of the times those thoughts are going to convince you that they're right. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it's just when you're in it, it's so that much harder to pull yourself back out and like, let tell yourself, no, there are people who are going to help me that care about me. But when you're kind of down in that hole and you don't see anyone like looking for you appearing over the side, like you convince yourself that you are alone. Yeah. Actually, I think whole is the perfect word for it. You know, when you're in prison and you do something wrong, you get put to solitary confinement and they call it the whole, you know, it's, it's, that's literally what it is. It's a place where you are just being punished to be alone. So I think that's actually the perfect description of it, frankly. Um, what are some of the things that you guys deal with almost on a, maybe just a daily basis? I feel like it's the little things that add up to the big things sometimes. So what are some of your, not that anything's small, but the, the sort of the daily things that you deal with. I mean, if there's a, we all have had big traumas in our lives and that's sort of a separate issue, but what are your sort of reoccurring, um, daily struggles that you guys feel like you're working on all the time? Jenny, let's start with you. I think for me personally, it takes effort every single day to kind of make sure like I'm in the right headspace. And a lot of the times that something that triggers me is I feel like I have to solve everything at once. Um, I'm 26, people around me are getting married, they're buying houses, they're doing this, that. The grass kind of tends to look greener in certain areas. I know we'll get into social media, but that ha plays a big role. Um, but I think just reminding yourself that you don't have to solve everything at once. Um, you're in the moment right now, focus just on that moment, um, being present, being mindful, all that stuff. Um, and there are kind of certain techniques that we both use to make sure we can do that. So I don't know, like journaling, meditating, affirmations, like we talk about this all the time, but um, just consistently yeah. just making sure that you're not your own worst enemy in those situations and you're not convincing yourself that you're behind or you have to do all of this at once and you have to be where you want to go right at this minute. Um, you can slow down, you can take it day by day. And, um, just if you work at it every single day and focus on the moment, then, um, things will eventually pan out for you. So is that about feeling like a control, like that you feel like you're in control of, you know, your, your life and your job? Is that, is that where the, the, the stress comes in? Yeah. I think feeling like things are, are out of control. Yeah. Like there's a certain part of me that had an idea of what my life would look like at this age. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Like they do. And guess what? I'm here at that age and it looks like nothing like I thought it would look like. Not that it's a bad thing. It's just, that's not how life works. You can't plan it in that way. But then it's just reassuring yourself. It's okay that this is how it is. Um, everything happens for a reason. It's so cheesy, but I consistently try to remind myself that. And um, yeah, I think it, it is an aspect of control and feeling like, whoa, life's moving so fast and I wanted to control it and it to look like this, but it doesn't, but that's okay. And it's actually better that it doesn't because you are supposed to be where you're at currently in this moment. And Carrie, what about you? What are your, some of those reoccurring triggers that hit you frequently? Well, right before you started speaking, Jenny, I just doodled and wrote staying present which is like very similar to you, but there was other ones I was thinking of before for me, I think still being an athlete, but I guess anyone could relate to this is just like self doubt, like not being good enough, like working towards these goals specifically for me as a soccer player right now and like falling short and then like having my confidence kind of, and my worth be tied into that and my identity as a footballer. Um, and then the ways I deal with that, which I'm pretty, you know, there are days where I, get inconsistent with it. But when I'm on it, it really helps. It's like gratitude, self affirmations. Like we've talked about it, like literally writing stuff out of my mirror, consistently doing it. And then also having a growth mindset, which basically is reminding me that like, I shouldn't be focused on the outcome, but more about the process and the journey. Um, that's really, really helpful too. 
yeah, also I'm going to add something. Leaning on people that are close <laughs> to you, um, no matter how strong you are, you're always going to need a support system. So just making sure you keep mm -hmm. those people close and like Lord knows Carrie and I just lean on each other all the time. Um, and luckily we kind of have different schedules of when we need help. So like if I'm in a good spot, she'll lean on me, vice versa. So yeah, that's always something to keep in mind. It's funny though. Cause there's been times where we both kind of, yeah. don't do we don't talk for like weeks. I'm like I wonder where yeah. she's been. And she's like, yeah, I was like, I deleted social media. I've been reaching out. I'm like, same. How are you now? It's so funny. Yeah, but, but we get it. We we have an understanding, and yeah. Also, and what the new we do iPhone is we, va feature. we validate. What, yes. <laughs> what iPhone? I was gonna say the one where it shows you if someone's on Do Not Disturb, like if there there are notifications. Oh, oh. That's also key. Right. And so when then I see know, that, I'm like, okay, you know they, yeah. <laughs> what I was gonna say is having someone that validates you is really important. And we talked about that in one of our episodes. I think it's called like the do's and don'ts or what to say or not to say or something pretty, you know, original name for the episode there. But <laughs> we basically talk about like validating someone's feelings when they're going through a tougher time. If you can't empathize, like there are things you can do just like supporting being there for someone, even though you'll probably never fully understand specifically what that person's going through. Support is really helpful. Well, the interesting thing about support and asking for help is, you know, people always feel like it's this burden, right? You don't want to ask someone for help because you feel like they're burdening them. But I always go back to the, <clears throat> when people ask me for help, I'm honored. I'm flattered. Like it almost makes me feel good to be the person someone reaches out to. So like in a way, it's like it's the opposite of burdening someone. You're showing them that you value them when you mm -hmm. ask for help. You know, there's nothing, you know, I don't know. There's like nothing negative about it, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. How do you guys feel when you guys, when you get asked for help, how do you feel? I've never really thought about it that way, but I guess that is like, they're going to you. You're their go-to gal because they think you have the answer that can make them feel better, which is like kind of an honor. Yeah. Yeah. I think on the flip side, when you are the person going to ask for help, you're doing it because you're in such a vulnerable state currently and that's almost like a last resort before like before you do that you're going to try to help yourself but then you go to them when you're super vulnerable and that's why it's kind of scary and you are so nervous that their reaction is just going to push you even further down um nine times out of ten it's not that's not what happens but i think that's kind of the reasoning behind feeling like you're a burden um but i do that i get that feeling too like when people will come to me um, not that I'm happy that they're having the issues, but I'm happy that they find me to be like a safe enough space to be able to have that conversation and also feel like I could help them get out of it. Well, I just started smiling because <laughs> Jenny is like a pretty busy woman, like with work and <laughs> I call her like scrambled eggs brain. Like she's kind of all over the place with a lot yeah. of different, you're juggling a lot of balls in your life. But it's funny, though, because when I go to her and I, I'm i like, I am struggling bad, I, within 30 minutes or less, I get an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> given to me via text of, like, the situation, how my brain's tricking me, the solution, literally all this, like, I'm like, how do you have time to do this? But Butterfly Road's been waiting to be edited for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, we don't have to talk about that but. But yeah, <laughs> no, but it's like really nice that someone who's juggling all these balls has work very busy is like, okay, boom, you're struggling, gets to work, sends me Excel spreadsheet with just like things I can control in the moment that I need. And that, that helps me feel better immediately. So yeah, yeah a lot of well, people are do, not you able do to do that or too. not willing to do that. I don't know if I hit you with an Excel spreadsheet. Am but, I, well, I'm like, like a psycho that, I'm like, like wow. that, but <laughs> but you'll send me voice this notes or like videos really back. Nice. That's what's good. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Do yeah. yeah. So we See, have ways no, to help each other. There's no limit to like the ways that you can help someone, whether it's Excel or a voice note or, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, even just, you know, I just, some of my friends, I just have to send them like cute things of kittens and, and puppies and <laughs> that's I've at least sending got works. ball rolling to feeling better. I've been doing that. I've been sending Ginny little video reels on Instagram of all these dogs lately. Did you not notice I've been doing that? No, I just been, I like, have. sending you dogs. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, actually, no, I have The ones I thought... were like two different, 
the ones with two different animals becoming friends, those always just give me hope and hum- oh, like yeah. humanity. <laughs> you They're know? so cute. Yeah, yeah. anything with dogs oh. will well, you guys, you guys... make me happier. <laughs> anything dogs for you? Yeah, anything. Yeah, that's, see, look at her giggling just thinking about it. That's why I just send them her way now. Well, you guys touched on this a little bit, but let's dive dive into it maybe a little bit deeper. So we'll get to some of the positive things, but you guys have talked about this on the podcast, about how social media, it can be a detriment to self-esteem. So can you guys unpack that a little bit for me? Kind of, What is it about social media that's that is harmful. And then we'll, we'll, we'll turn it in the end about, about the positive things too, but let's start with like how it can be detrimental. Okay. I guess I'll speak on this. It's hard. This is so complex. First of all, I do think social media is a highlight reel, including myself. Like there've been times where I've posted like a really happy smiley photo and it hasn't been the best day for me, but at the same time, that's all. I'm also posting it as like a life update because in that moment I was having a really good time But I think when people see my life, like people have reached out, they're like, you're doing so amazing in LA. It's so fun to watch your journey. I'm like, you missed all the part where I was like crying in my apartment or like feeling really alone or like struggling with, you know, confidence issues with Angel City or like whatever the situation was. They only see the smiles. And then in terms of just like, you know, the airbrush and the filters and the models and like all of that type of stuff, it's just like creating this standard of beauty or standard of excellence when things are edited or clipped or cut a certain way that you're just like wait people are actually achieving that and you have to remind yourself like no that's not real life like that's that was really really edited um but people forget in the moment when you open social media and you scroll like it just gets dangerous and then like with relationships you see engagements or weddings or whatever and you you have to remind yourself like your journey is your journey Um, and to not let that stuff like make you feel inferior, but we do compare naturally and it, it kind of sucks. Yeah. The comparison. I do it all the time. The comparison's hard. I think some people are a lot better at not doing it than others. Um, I think it's a situation where you're just looking at all these different types of, and I would say TikTok even enhance this, but you just feel Mm -hmm. like the grass is kind of greener. Um, on the other side. And I was talking to my friends this past weekend and we were talking about this exact topic and we were saying what we want to do when we see these sort of pictures, like, let's say it's this beautiful model. Um, she's on a vacation. We want to like pick and choose. Like we want her swimsuit. We want her hair, but we also have to think like, okay, if you want those things, you have to take everything that's in her life. And there are things that you have in your life that she doesn't have. And so if you take her entire life, you're going to be giving up some things that are super valuable in your own that you won't have anymore. And so I think it's, it's because Instagram, social media makes it seem like these people have no problems. It's, you know, all sunshine and rainbows. And um, not like that's a bad thing. Everyone's free to do whatever they want on social media. But I think it's just making sure you remind yourself that it is a highlight reel. I also try to envision them like when I see a picture that's so like picture perfect, basically, I try to imagine them actually taking the picture and like maybe telling the person like, oh, no, take a few shots from over there just because like that's what real life is. And it's not all like that single picture isn't what their life is all the time. Just you know, reminding yourself like reality does come with its problems. Everyone has them. Um, Even though they look happy in this, they might be feeling super sad that day. Yeah. I think it's just constantly reminding yourself that it is a highlight reel. Have you ever seen those? um, I think they're on TikTok. It's like, how many snapshots did it take for me to get the final photo? And it's like (laughs) a thousand and they go through and they show, they took a thousand pictures to post the one. And I'm like, Okay, that's like really helpful. So people do actually use it to say like, oh, this was it pre-filtered or like this is me with reality. Like I do filter my photos and it it is kind of like reassuring to see that stuff. Um, I've seen on social media people like, well, if, if social media makes your mental health bad, then like stay off it, which like leads into what you're probably about to ask, Jen. Like, I don't think it's all bad. I think there are a lot of aspects. So it's like, you don't have to just like stay off social media. There's so many great parts to it where it's like, I mean, for Angel City, it's marketing. Like 
people get to keep up with how the team's doing. They get to know the team, the personalities off the field or like what those people are passionate about or what they're working on outside of football. And like, for me, I give life updates. Like I moved to LA, all these people in my life. I'm not texting everyone on my phone. Like, by the way, I just, you know, moved to LA. It's like, no, I'm here in LA. I'm happy. These are my friends. I'm doing great. Like life updates are important. I think um, getting to know someone's like goofiness, personality, getting to just connect with other people that have like similar um, passions to you and then for us with butterfly road like reminding people that they're not alone for, yeah like, a social <laughs> issue like that i think is like the coolest thing ever like imagine if our butterfly road instagram didn't exist and people didn't get to see us interact in the videos and the posts of when the episodes come out like we'd have three listeners and then we wouldn't be helping anybody so there are so many positives truly jenny what about you what how what are your thoughts on the pitfalls we get into with social media and how people could have a better outlook on it when they, as they use it. I think limiting the amount of time you're on it for sure. Um, screen time, you can like put limits on your phone. That helps me, even though sometimes I'll click ignore, but <laughs> most of the time it helps <laughs> me. Um, I think there have been weeks, even like a month at a time where I'll just delete it altogether just to take a little break. Um, and it's amazing. Kind of the first week's a little hard. It's almost like you go through a withdrawal basically. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, what is everyone up to? But then you kind of realize, Oh, I don't really need it as much as I thought I did. And it's making my mental health a little better. Um, I go back to redownloading it because it is, it does have good attributes to it. So for example, like Instagram, I follow tons of sports accounts. It helps me stay up, up to date on everything. Angel City, for example. Um, TikTok. Good I think example. Is, yeah. <laughs> TikTok is super informational if you're on the right side of it. Like there are so many things that I've learned um, and so many like funny videos too that doesn't, it doesn't involve like comparing yourself. Um, the ones that really get me are the ones like with the the girls that will wake up at like 4 a.m. and like make their matcha tea. And if that works for them, all the power to them. But I look at that when I'm like not even out of bed at eight and I'm not planning on being out of bed for another hour. And it's just like, what am I doing wrong? But in reality, it's that's when you have to remind yourself like they edited all this stuff to make it look as perfect as it did. They probably spent hours like this isn't their real life. Like, yes, they maybe they're in a really good headspace, but just because your life doesn't look like that, like doesn't mean you're behind or anything. But I think definitely just being cognizant of how much time you're on it. And also just following accounts that are really good for your mental health. There are a ton of accounts that will post like inspirational quotes or will post like daily reminders. If even on Instagram stories, they'll post stories. So you go through it and you see like a quick reminder. Um, and then, you know, it's just always good to have someone else kind of in your ear giving you a pep talk. So yeah, I think little things like that help. Carrie, I want to tell you that's kind of specific to, to sports and, and being a professional athlete, you know, there is this, you know, pedestal that athletes get put on that you have to thrive under pressure at no matter what the costs, you know, you have to be superhuman you have to be tough and resilient and and oftentimes that comes at a price of putting your you know your health and your life in unnecessary danger at some in some ways you know mm -hmm. and what you know where is the line you know and how do you what do you think we need to be doing about this this perception of athletes I mean I talked about this last year and um, I've had many conversations with many old teammates about this too about like what is the line and I think every athlete is different and I I personally think when your sport is the thing that's like putting so much pressure on you that you, that's no no longer your fun and no longer your escape and it's just putting you in so much you know duress that's when it's like okay maybe I need to like step away for a little bit because that's the thing that should be the most enjoyable part of my life um we have an episode it's called I think like taking a leave or something like that like basically when should you step away and take care of your mental health. And um, I think knowing that you have the option to do so as an athlete without repercussions of like losing playing time or people looking down on you, which is like, we have a long way to go. I feel like because people are afraid to open up and say like, you know what? 
these pressures of sports, they are too much for me right now. No one's going to go up to their coach and say that because then their coach is going to be like, oh, well, you're, you're not strong enough up here to play. Like you can't handle this. Like you can't handle pro sports or college sports or club sports. It's No one wants to admit that they're weak. That's what people think, but it's not a weakness. And I think, like I said, once that starts to become the thing that isn't fun anymore and it's not your escape and you're not feeling like you're growing and there's too much pressure weighing you down, that's when the line is drawn for me. Um, But then there are times where it's like, okay, you had a bad training, bounce back. There are tools, strategies, growth mindset, journaling about it, learning how to hit the reset button, which is something we talk about. So you can come in the next day and grow. I think there's like a very fine line between like adversity in sport and like this pressure is actually making me ill. And the one thing I wrote at the bottom of my paper here circled big is awareness of knowing, which I think just comes from like listening to others, educating yourself, maybe like reading about it or just like kind of looking inward and saying, okay, is this just like the standard adversity of sport or is this like, I'm not doing well and I need to really take care of myself here. So very individualized situations, I think. Yeah. I I mean, you can't deny that winning makes everything better. Right. But one thing I really want to credit angel city fans for in particular, you know, when we've lost games or had a draw, the, the comments that we get on social media are really just, they're so lovely, you know, for the most part, it's people saying, you know, you no worries, going to yeah. get them next time. Proud to be a fan, proud to have, and people who were in the stadium are just, were just happy to have been there and they've enjoyed their experience. And so I do kind of want to shout out our fans and honestly, just our team in general that like, you know, obviously winning is important. That's what we're here to do. That's our job, but you know, we're not always going to. And I think that the way that we've been treated by our community is really phenomenal. I don't care if you felt that. Yes. I um, want to specifically shout out when we played Gotham in May, late May, right before Memorial day, we lost one zero. It was kind of like a bummer. We, I brutal. remember <laughs> one of the girls on the team saying, the fans are all celebrating like we just won. We walked around, we signed autographs. I was, my friends were there. I was giving hugs, happy as a clam. Obviously I want to win. I want to be competitive. But when you have those fans supporting you like that and kind of like having your back no matter what, it just makes it like so great. And I, it's really nice. I've talked to some fans um, and it's, it's just nice to know that they're supporting you because they support you as a human and a player. Obviously we all want to win, but I think, and you guys do a great job on the media. Like I think because they know us as human beings, they really are just like behind us, which makes it really awesome. But yeah, I totally agree. Like that, that's one specific game. I think that's the last time we lost at the bank, but we totally felt like everyone was still really excited and pumped to be there and like supporting us like crazy. It was incredible. Yeah. And it just motivates you to then like, it gets you back. Yeah, you to want to tra- play you know, for after that. It gets mm-hmm. you back to training, like with a little more pep in your stuff. And yeah, no, it's, it's kind of amazing and really love what our fans have, have brought to the table. Um, Jenny, I just want to, I want to toss something to you, just, you know, the two of you as mental health advocates, you know, why do you, why do you do it? Why, why is it so important that people work on their mental health as much as they do their physical health? And, and why is this such an important topic for, for the two of you? One, because it hits close to home. And two, because I'm a big believer in like everything starts with the brain, like your whole perception of reality and what's going on in your life and your status and where you're at, it all starts with the brain. And so if you can work on your brain and change your thought patterns, which is possible, it just takes work and change the way you're speaking to yourself and reacting to certain situations, um, it's easier said than done, obviously, but that will just then help change your reality and help, you know, get yourself back on track, get yourself out of that hole. And um, as someone who's kind of been at a super, super low point, but also been at really high points, like I know, and I'm sure Carrie can say the same, that it is possible to, you know, change the way that you're thinking and change your reality. And yeah, I think like I said at the beginning, the more research that comes out about the brain and how we can train it, which is honestly a relatively new industry. It's, you know, something we're still kind of starting to learn about to this day, but um, the brain is 
the most powerful thing that you have. And so it's just, it's so important to kind of exercise that just as you would exercise your body for a game. Something that I want to point out that happened recently on July 16th, um, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline launched a new number. So before it was a regular, you know, 10 digit number, but they changed it to be just 988, just like 911. You can call or text 988 and you will be connected to it, an actual human. You know, you the, they have promised that every every call and text gets um, immediate response from, from a, a real life human and a trained professional that can help with really any mental health emergency or situation that you're having. Um, and in the first week that they did that, they got 45% more calls than they had, than they normally would in a week. So I think it's, you know, phenomenal that we are getting this point and that the, you know, federal government is pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into this, you know, just as a treatment just like any emergency that anybody would have. Do you guys, do, I'm sure you guys heard about that. Like, how did you feel when you, when you heard about that, that news? Oh, it, I think it's incredible. I think that there's a lot of people out there that are struggling with suicidal ideation and they don't have the capacity to dial the 10 digit number. They don't know the number. They don't want to look it up. They're just like, what do I do to have a number 988 memorize that easy when you're really at the lowest, lowest point, I mean, it's obviously going to save lives as you just backed up that they got 45% more calls. Like I just, I've talked to people in this world that I've given that number out to the 10 digit number. And I'm like, yeah, imagine if like three days ago before they reached out to me, they could have just dialed 988 on their own. It would have been a lot more helpful earlier on. I was going to say not everyone has access to therapy or resources, you know, that stuff becomes expensive if you don't have health insurance, even if you do sometimes, like it's really hard to access that. And so to have a resource that's free to people and it's as easy as dialing three numbers on your phone, like obviously that's going to change lives and save lives. I also think the marketing campaign to let people know that it was changing made people aware that it was even there. Like, I'm sure there are some people that didn't even know it exists, but now it's mm -hmm. almost like as common, not as common, but common like 911. So yeah, it's a good step. Well, I am incredibly thankful for and, and grateful for this conversation today. I'm very excited to have had the two of you involved with this. Um, quick thing is at, for our, our our presenting sponsor, Birdies, the Game Changer is still available. It's a limited edition shoe uh, uh, version of the Swift. It rocks Angel City's official colors and emblem. And why we believe this shoe will just give you that extra pep in your step and inspire sport, empower you uh, to be your own game changer in your own life. Um, it's available at birdies.com, angelcity.com, or at the, the Birdies store on Abbott in LA. Um, that's the, the Angel City promo, but now it is time for you guys to give some promos to things that, that you want to shout out. Um, what uh, what are things that you want to make sure people know about? Well, this is cheesy. I was just going to say Butterfly Road. <laughs> yeah, same. I think, I think I'm like, I constantly am like sending my episodes to my teammates to listen to. I listen to them myself. I go back and listen to my own advice and Jenny's advice. So I think... Um, I feel like maybe I'm biased. I feel like we're pretty entertaining, pretty fun. But I think the more people that know about it, they'll listen and be like, oh yeah, that like wasn't terrible. So yeah, I'm going to just like plug and say, give it a chance because there's there's something in our 38 episodes that somebody can relate to. I'll tell you that. Yeah, there's got to be like at Wherever least Wherever you find thing. your podcast, right? Available? Yeah, yeah. It's on Apple, Spotify, just like the normal platforms and then Instagram, Butterfly Road Podcast. Yeah. And if anyone has yeah. suggestions for topics, we always take suggestions from people. I think we've done a couple so far. Even if you want to reach mm -hmm. out and just like chat to us on Butterfly Road, like we're on it. We'll respond oh, yeah, we to always you. answer the DMs. Yeah, yeah we always yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah, we always do. Do you guys have any like final thoughts on this topic or even just something that you've said already that you just want to be like, hey, I, need, I want you to remember this one thing if you remember nothing else from today? So Jenny, let's start with you. What's your, what's your final thought you want to drive home? Um, cheesy, but you're not alone. Yeah, you're not alone. And you do have the power, whether it's the power to reach out to someone to help you or the power to work on it yourself. You have the power to change your reality and 
change your mindset. And I think it's huge. Yeah. Sorry, how about you? Well, I'm going back to the awareness thing. I don't really know my thought, but I just think having the awareness to recognize, and I'm not saying like debilitating mental illness, but even like those little things we were talking about in your day where you're like, oh, I was pretty negative and hard on myself today. Having the awareness to kind of say, let me reframe that. Let me like focus on the positive. Let me have gratitude. Having the awareness to kind of like build yourself up, change your thoughts. And then in terms of like when you're really, really struggling with a mental illness, having the awareness to realize like we both did when she was in eighth grade and I was in college, like, whoa, something's not right. We're not thinking like everyone else. We need serious help. Um, I think that's the thing that like really helps people get back on track and saves lives. So try to just like kind of check in with yourself and be like, am I my normal self? Am I feeling great? What can I do to enhance my life? What tools and strategies can I use or who can I lean on? Can't think of better notes to end on. Again, thank you so, so much for joining us today on this amazing Birdies conversation where we talk about mental health. We'll see you guys next time.